The primary election is fast approaching. Here in Maryland, July 19th is the date. Of course, this date changed due to a court order. So election day coming up, July 19th in Maryland, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. primary election day polling places will be open. Now, in re- with regards to early voting, centers will open on July 7th and uh, stay open until July 14th. You can vote early in any of the early voting centers in the jurisdiction that you live. Locations will be announced soon. So one of the main races that folks are looking at, focusing on here in Maryland, of course, is the gubernatorial primary, that election. Who's going to replace incumbent Governor Larry Hogan? Of course, Larry Hogan is term limited and is uh, serving out the uh, remainder of his term. He's had two Republican Lieutenant Governor uh, Boyd Rutherford announced earlier this month that he will not be a candidate for governor. So as of the filing deadline, there are 14 candidates running in their respective primary elections for governor of Maryland. You have 10 Democrats, you have four Republicans And uh, we are really entering into a very exciting time, right? Uh, The Democrats, their primary is on July 19th. And the Republicans in Maryland primary is on July 19th. So what if you're an independent? Now, uh, independents and and other unaffiliated candidates are not subjected to the primary elections. They're going to go straight to November. (laughs) These candidates, these independents or unaffiliated candidates will run in the general election only, which is in November. So uh, there are a bunch of folks, as I said, 14 that are running for governor. And last night, seven of the Maryland Democrat Democrats uh, were participated rather in a forum at Coppin State, the historically black college and universities uh, came up a lot in the conversation as it should. Uh, But last night's forum uh, really centered around the inequity and, and, and a remedy for the inequity Uh, economically of HBCUs and uh, Baltimore in general. So these seven candidates pointed to, um, you know, the funding of the HBCUs. Unfortunately, HBCUs have historically been underfunded public colleges. They they have been. Uh, So there was conversation about a way to cure the shortage of uh, health care workers and, and some inequity in education. Great conversations to have. Uh, for the most part, this was a, a cordial form. It has, I, I think that things are going to have to dwindle down a little bit more before we really start uh, seeing these candidates go at each other. And um, when addressing their plans to implement the blueprint for Maryland's future education reforms, uh, there were some interesting comments. Wes Moore, who is one of the front runners on the Democratic side, and Tom Perez, the former Maryland and U.S. Labor Secretary, uh, both of these gentlemen said that Maryland's student bodies overwhelmingly is not represented by the educators in their classrooms, right? In other words, the 
uh, educators, the teachers, are disproportionately white. Tom Perez said, our students are disproportionately non-white, Perez said. Uh, I, I had a chance to speak with Tom Perez after the forum, and I, I was really impressed with Tom Perez. He obviously is a former U.S. Secretary of Labor, uh, and many folks nationwide saw him uh, as the head of the Democratic Party. Uh, and in these positions, I really had a different perspective and a, and a, and a different view of Tom Perez. But since he's been running for governor of Maryland, I've had a chance to see, uh, you know, the passion. And I've had a chance to hear him. And I like what he's saying. I I, I really, I really like what he's saying. Uh, And really the uh, experience that he has as the secretary of labor, he has really been pointing to some of his uh, traits, some of his duties, uh, his ability to bring folks together, uh, create a coalition. Uh, these are things he talked about, uh, a labor strike where he was able to get folks to the table. These are some of the types of things that we need our politicians to be able to do. And especially here in Maryland, where you have uh, just a big line between the haves and the have-nots, a big line between who has been getting money and who has been underfunded. Uh, and these sides are, 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 are not on the same page. And, and you do need someone, especially after eight years of Larry Hogan, we need someone who can really bring folks together. We need an investment in Baltimore. Right, we need, we need an investment in Baltimore. Uh, a lot of other counties in the state have seen investment. Baltimore has just been underserved, underserved, and we need someone in Annapolis that has a good relationship and has uh, the desire to see things work here in Baltimore once again. After eight years of Larry Hogan, we haven't had that. We have not had that. And I'm not blaming Annapolis for every problem in Baltimore. Don't don't misinterpret my words. Uh, But uh, there is definitely an issue when you talk about HBCUs. Uh, Several several candidates running, uh, running mates rather, uh, attended HBCUs, right? Now, when we talk about HBCUs, last year, last spring, Maryland reached a $577 million settlement with its four HBCUs. There had been a 15-year lawsuit alleging that the state provided them with (laughs) inequitable resources. This is not a secret. This is not... Uh, anything that most people did not know. It took way too long for this settlement to happen. So the General Assembly passed legislation last year to require a steady flow of that funding to Morgan, to Coppin, to Bowie, and to uh, UMES, Eastern Shore, over the next decade. This is a step in the right direction, right? Right? Uh, We also had the ex-wife of Jeff Bezos, Mackenzie Scott, donated $40 million to Morgan State, $25 million to Bowie, $20 million to the uh, UMES in uh, late 2020. So now these uh, universities have to uh, plan how to best use that funding. And I want to, I'm really hoping that this money goes to the students, benefiting the students and not in some uh, uh, bureaucrats' pockets. So we had this candidate form where we had seven Democrats who are trying to become the next 
governor of Maryland. And what did they talk about? Uh, it it was an I don't know it's over a little bit over two hours of discussion, uh, but there were some standout moments, and you know, Westmore, someone who has been in the news lately, uh, as I said, one of the front runners, polished. He's he, he's polished. He 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 knows his spill. He. He knows his shtick, right? He's had experience speaking. And he comes off as, as what he is, a road scholar. Uh, so uh, he brings that to the table. And uh, another person that I was very impressed with, a former Prince George's County executive, Rashern L. Baker III, uh, went to Howard University, met his uh, late wife, when they were both students at Howard, she went on to work at the uh, UNCF, United Negro College Fund, after she graduated. Uh, so uh, HBCUs, something that is very important to him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like that fact. And, uh, you know, the forum, it, it was, it exceeded my expectations, and I want to see more of these, and uh, I wish it had been promoted more. Uh, but nonetheless, the forum also included John Barron, who I also had a chance to talk to uh, after the forum. Uh, I really liked the ideas. Uh, he's a fresh face. He's someone, that, I mean, incredibly, incredibly intelligent. And uh, he has... He has the type of energy that is needed. He's a progressive. Uh, a former vice president of evidence-based policy, Arnold Ventures. Right? So he's, he's looking at things. And one thing I, I really liked about uh, uh, John Barron was he recognized and pointed out on numerous occasions that these problems that we've been facing uh, here in, in Baltimore, in Maryland, in the country, are problems that we have been plagued with for years and years and years. And Mr. Barron pointed out, as a lot of his colleagues, uh, running mate, uh, you know, uh, his um, opponents, you know, kind of running down the same old thing. Well, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And uh, John Barron pointed out the fact that. We've been doing it that way for years, and nothing is different. He, he pointed out that a lot of these candidates are just giving us more of the same. Uh, it was a powerful moment, and uh, I agree with him 100%. 100%. Uh, very progressive, but at the same time, uh, he is a let's look at the science kind of guy, right? Let's do what's been proven, right? Now, you have someone like uh, Rashern Baker, who is the president and CEO of Baker Strategies. As I said, former Prince George's County Executive, 2010 to 2018. And he was leaning on his experience. His experience as an executive, his experience in government, and his uh, knowledge on how to get things done. So in addition to that, we had Doug Gansler, who is, of course, many people recognize him, or at least recognize his name. He's a former uh, Maryland Attorney General from 2007 to 2015. He's another person who was really pointing to his record, pointing to his experience. The fact that he's been doing this on a high level for many years, all right? And uh, uh, there was, uh, you know, I don't want to say there were dust-ups per se. Uh, Dr. Jerome Seagull was, you know, put, picture Bernie Sanders. Uh, he, had, <laughs> he had that kind of energy, right? He had that kind of energy, and uh, he was definitely someone speaking his mind. He is the founder of Bread and Roses the author of Grace, Graceful Simplicity, 
the philosophy of poli- and politics of living simple or simple living. Uh, and, you know, 70, he's 78 years old and he is, he is on the far left of, uh, of, of would you would say the Democratic Party, right? Uh, he is, uh, he had a lot of ideas that were populist ideas, will, will be great for the people, uh, but very, very difficult in getting some of the things that he wants to get done, done, right? Uh, very difficult. Um, so we talked about Tom Perez, former U.S. Secretary of Labor, 2013, 2017, uh, his running mate, uh, Baltimore City Councilwoman, Sharon Sneed from District 13. Uh, and uh, so we talked about Westmore briefly. Westmore, the former CEO, former combat veteran, small business owner uh, from Tacoma Park. He is the author of The Other Westmore. And, uh, you know, his, his running mate is uh, from Montgomery County, former delegate from District 15, Delegate Miller, former Delegate Miller. Uh, she was in that seat, uh, 2011 to 2019. Westmore, as I said, a Rhodes Scholar, right? Super smart, has the business experience, military experience. He has the poise, he has the look, he has the the way, the ability to communicate. I just feel that he he came off as uh, above the fray a bit. Uh, there were some jabs thrown at him uh, about a few things with regards to um, uh, some of his endorsements. Uh, Mr. Moore spoke about his many endorsements. And uh, if you've been uh, throughout Baltimore, you've seen some of his signs. You've seen uh, a lot of um, advertisement for him. And you've seen him talking about his books, talking about... Uh, different things. He's done a lot and he's had a lot of visibility. Uh, Yesterday, I was was expecting him to be, I don't know, more down to earth. Um, But I mean, you know, there's been this long said thing that your politician has to be somebody that you could picture yourself having a beer with, right? I I couldn't picture myself having a beer with Wes Moore uh, while I don't drink. First, so <laughs> let me say that. Uh, but uh, Westmore, I um, I was more impressed with Tom Perez than I was with Westmore. Now I don't know whether that was because my expectations were lower for Tom Perez because of uh, what I had seen from him previously, or or Westmore's were so high because of what I've seen from him previously. I don't know. And as this race goes on, I think that we're going to really be able to unpack and unravel uh, some of that stuff. So uh, Doug Gansler came at things like you would expect. He's going to be heavy law enforcement. He's an attorney general or, or he's a former attorney general. So his focus was on reducing crime and uh, he said pretty much if you want things to stay the same, vote for one of these other guys. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do some things different. And I am going to buckle down on crime. Another front runner, another person that in Maryland people know, uh, Peter Fran- uh, Francho. And uh, he is the controller. He's been the controller since 2007. Most folks in Maryland know him. Uh, at least know his name, 74 years old. And, uh, you know, he didn't come off as Joe Biden exactly, but he had that Joe Biden energy. You know what I mean? He had that Joe Biden energy. He had that you-know-me kind, of, uh, kind of vibe. I've been doing this. I'm going to continue to do uh, what Maryland needs, but I'm going to have you know, more leeway to get things done if you make me the governor. And uh, and that was his thing, my record. And he obviously has experience in government. Uh, now, of course, if you're somebody like John Barron or you're somebody like Tom Perez, you're going to point to a, a Peter Francho and say, you know, look at these folks' records. 
you know, you haven't been doing anything, pretty much, right? Haven't been doing anything. Wes Moore said something that was, uh, I, I thought was very interesting. He said that a lot of these folks on the stage, their fingerprints are on some of the bad things that have happened, right? Like, you've been a part, the ones that say, oh, I've been in government, I've been doing this in Maryland, I've been doing this, you're part of the problem. And that was something that uh, uh, Rashern Baker pointed out, and he, and he uh, accepted his part in being uh, a member of government for years and uh, even acknowledged that he's made mistakes. Most politicians don't say, oh, I've made some mistakes over time, Right? They just kind of act like uh, if they've been in government, that they've been doing it, and, and if they were uh, in office during the time when something uh, less than favorable happened, they, oh, it was somebody else's fault. But uh, uh, Mr. Baker doing a rare thing and uh, actually uh, accepting some blame for, for some things. So it's still early in the race. We still have about two months to go, and we're going to see more uh, of uh, forums and, and debates and such. Uh, with regards to, we talk, we've been talking about Democrats. With regards to the Republicans, you have uh, four Republicans running. You have Dan Cox, who is a state delegate, District 4, Carroll and Frederick counties since 2019. All right? And uh, so, as I said, he, he's, he's one of the four uh, Mr. Cox was or is endorsed by Donald Trump. So you already have a, an idea of the type of Republican that he is. And um, there, he is, you know, um, not a fan. Uh, Dan Cox is not a fan of Larry Hogan. Obviously, uh, Hogan and Trump not on the same page. So, uh, he is someone who is kind of, you know, anti-Hogan. And that, that's interesting to see from uh, a Republican. Uh, you also have Robin Ficker running for governor. He's a, he's a Republican. And, um, you know, Robin for governor is, is his uh, hashtag. He's from Montgomery County. He's an attorney. Uh, so that is... Uh, one of the Republicans out there. And you also have Kelly Schultz. She's a former Maryland Secretary of Commerce, 2019 to 2022. Former Maryland Secretary of Labor, 2015 to 2019. And, uh, you know, so she is, she's a Republican that she's running. And uh, so she has some some interesting ideas. Uh, and, you know, we know what we're going to get from a Republican for the most part. Um, so she's been talking about some of her endorsements. And, uh, you know, it is another focus of the Republican Party. She's, she's talking about what's happening in the classrooms. And uh, we are all very focused on that. I think that uh, that Kelly Schultz is one of the Republicans. Republican front runners, uh, and she wants to make sure that the, all children receive a world class education. Uh, Maryland does have some amazing schools, and uh, we agree on that. I would really like to sit down and talk with her about uh, her promise and her commitment to the students of Maryland and what exactly she has in mind for that. Uh, but you, you know, you have one other Republican running, and that is Joe Werner. Um, not a lot of information out there about him. I have um, seen his social media, looked at some of his videos and some of the things that he that he has to say. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. So we have these four: uh, Joe Werner, Kelly Schultz, Robin Ficker, Dan Cox. Uh, trying to replace Governor Larry Hogan. And we have 10 Democrats, seven who we saw last night at Coppin State University for this uh, economic forum. Interesting times that we are in. I want to make sure that folks are out there in Maryland that you start researching these folks. 
And, uh, and I said, I'm going to be talking about the election. I'm going to be talking about this primary. I'm going to be talking about the midterms uh, for the foreseeable future because it is super important. It is su- super important. The voter's guide. I, I want to be your voter's guide here in Maryland. Whoever you vote for, right? I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Of course, I'm going to give you uh, my take on this. But I am committed to give you the information that you need to cast your vote. This primary election is coming up. Registered voters can participate in the primary election of their party affiliation. And of course, in November, you can do, you can do what you do. But uh, the primary, who you're registered to, Democrat or Republican, that's who you're going to be, uh, have the opportunity to vote for. We said this earlier. Uh, Voting centers are going to open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the primary. Early voting centers open July the 7th to July 14th. You can vote at any early voting center in the jurisdiction that you live. And when those locations become announced or are announced, we're going to put that out there. Primary election polling places will open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on July 19th. So early voting July 7th to July 14th, and then primary election day July 19th. You must vote at your assigned polling place on primary election day. So thankfully, uh, Larry Hogan is at the end of his term, and he is going to move on and do what's next in his, uh, you know, whatever he has next on his bucket list. We have 14 candidates right now. And as things dwindle down, I think that uh, that the, the, the reins are going to tighten up. And we're really going to be able to see what we have here. Is it going to be a Democrat? Is it going to be a Republican? Is it going to be an independent or unaffiliated candidate that makes it to become the next mayor of the great state of Maryland. You will be the deciders of that. You may Diamond K in here, of course, the Diamond K Show.com, on fire TV.com. That is on fire TV.com. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn at the Diamond K Show. I will see you guys tomorrow. Tried your best, uh-huh. work real hard, uh-huh. said your prayers, your prayer. gave it to God. God. He made a way Man. when you saw none. Uh-huh. Erased the fear, helped you overcome. Now you did it. Did it. You reached the top.